Okay, good afternoon. We are going to have a presentation now on Healthy Body, Healthy Home, Healthy Planet, How to Create a Non-Toxic Home with Lee Aaron Connolly. Lee Aaron Connolly is a prominent Lee, MD, is a prominent leader in the integrative functional medicine medical field. She is the medical director of two amazing clinics, the Cancer Center for Healing and Center for New Medicine. The combined clinics have become the largest integrative medical clinic in North America and visited by patients from all over the world. And I'd like to give you, everybody to give her a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to have you guys here. And uh, yes, I'm Dr. Learen Keneally. I've been practicing about 31, probably going on 32 years. And um, there's always a why someone does what they do. And so um, this is one of my big whys, is my husband and I, we have seven children, one grandchild, and the future of humanity is in serious, is of serious concern today because one in two men are getting cancer, 41% of females, and heart disease and cancer are escalating despite our heroic efforts. Also, our children, about 50% of our children are plagued with a chronic illness. So we, as informed, educated, aware individuals, definitely need to change the future of what's going on in our planet so that we save the future of humanity. This is a picture of my office. I always show a picture of our office because we want to create a healing, harmonious, peaceful atmosphere for our patients as opposed to a sterile, um, not inviting environment. So beauty is something that comes from the inside out, just like one of the speakers this weekend spoke about how your skin grows from the inside out. But each one of us is made up of trillions of cells, and all of those cells make up who we are physically. But it's, it's a change of, of an entire and embracing a total healthy lifestyle. So we do what I call the new modern medicine. The new modern medicine is combining the best of conventional medicine. I'm a conventionally trained medical doctor integrating herbs, nutrition, lifestyle, mental health. And it's a whole being, whole body healing platform. So here's the major take home. A lot of us are this weekend are presenting evidence and information that can be scary and daunting. But with this information, I want you to be encouraged and empowered to take charge of your own personal life. Health is the foundation for everything else. So if we don't have our health, we can't take care of ourselves. We can't take care of our loved ones. We can't be a good family member. We can't be a good employee. We can't be a great member of our community. So, so really, I want you to learn some great tools that you can take away today. Stress, we already know um, that we all have stress, but I'll give you some great little tools. Eating balance, drinking water, teaching your how to... Purify. I'm into self-care. I believe self-care, self-healing, self-compassion is the future of health care. Yes, our society knows a lot about how to take a selfie, but knows very, very little about ourself and how we work. And I see this every day in my clinic. We have about eight practitioners and 50 other employees, and every day, I have one patient after another educated supposedly about health, but then they wonder why they are ill. And so we need to now learn the, the rules and laws of mother nature that apply to our body so that we can 
begin to take care of ourselves and not rely on a sick medical system. It's kind of interesting. Health, people don't really understand what the definition of health is. And it's a state of complete mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. And as a lot of the speakers spoke this weekend, prevention is priceless. It is the future of, 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 of how we should be taking care of ourselves. Unfortunately, conventional medicine is very reactive as opposed to preventive. And we've got to change that because in the today's world, in 2018, we don't have to guess in healthcare. A lot of what we need to figure out is we can figure it out because of proper testing and proper exam and proper investigation of what's going on. Never judge a book by its cover. Same thing with the iceberg. It's not always about the lump or bump or the manifestation, it's what lies beneath. And so I always tell all of our patients who have cancer, they think that, oh my goodness, I have a breast lump, I have this lump, and they get diagnosed with cancer, and they think just removing it with surgery or chemo or radiation is going to change that lump. Well, for that lump to grow there took about 10, 12 years. So you're not gonna unwind that process with a quick surgery, a quick chemo, or quick radiation. If you don't change the milieu of your body, you won't be able to cure yourself of cancer. And our definition of cure in today's time is a circulating tumor cell of zero. Most doctors around the United States do not even check that. But you've got to change someone's mental well-being physical well-being, and social well-being to help them get rid of cancer. So integrative medicine, I call it the new modern medicine. Like I said, it's bringing together all kinds of discipline, botanical, nutritional, lifestyle, major lifestyle changes. It may be acupuncture. It may be energy treatments, all kinds of things that the doctor needs to implement in the care of a patient. So typical conventional medicine is, is prescribing a pill for every ill. Well, we see that now the third leading cause of death in this country now is the properly prescribed use of medicines and or procedures or accidents. So we, know, we now know that that is not the answer because after heart disease and cancer, the medical system is the third leading cause of death in this country. So we implement a whole being healing platform. And so you see all the different things. That's why we usually just don't fix you in a visit because if we're properly treating the whole mind and body, then it may take a couple of treatments depending upon what you present with. So the sad part about it is, is that very few people are interested in the health of themselves. So we've got to create this, this contagious movement to get people really interested in their health. They're, they become interested, when I see them, they become interested because they're facing a death diagnosis. That is not the time to get interested in your health. But unfortunately, that's what I see. And every day I think, what would, does it, will it take to someone to wake up and be proactive and preventive about their health? And I still don't know, because unfortunately in this day and time, what it takes is a serious diagnosis. So let's not wait until we have a serious diagnosis. Here's the causes of death as of May 2017, as I said. Heart disease, despite all the statin medication, all the cholesterol-lowering medicine, heart disease is still number one. Cancer is number two and growing. And so all of these diseases were not seen decline with all the education, with all the information, with all the charities, with all the fundraising, 
we're still not decreasing the incidence and prevalence of disease. So what causes all this? Because a lot of people are talking about lots of things. Is it GMOs? Is it allergies? Is it the chemicals? Is it vaccines? Everything. It's always everything. Every disease is multifactorial, which means there's lots of things that we look at. So when I see a patient, I always talk to them about every facet of their life. I do all the proper testing that we do. To, like I said, in today's world, we don't have to guess. We test and insurance pays for most of the testing. So there's no reason for people to get properly evaluated with a proper direction. Unfortunately, the doctors of today in the future are not well trained in integrative functional medicine. They have to go back to school. They've got to go back to conferences to learn the new modern way of practicing medicine and taking care of patients. So we talk about bugs, bacteria, virus, fungi, and parasites. They're real. They cause inflammation inciting a disease. For example, 40% of head and neck cancers are caused by HPV. HPV is human papillomavirus. It is the warts that grow usually on the genital area and is prevalent in about 80% of the population that are 20 year olds. So there's no good way to test for this unless you have a wart on your genital areas. So that's just one of the illnesses. There's Epstein-Barr, there's cytomegalovirus, parasites. Parasites in Europe are the seventh leading cause of death. Parasites are real. The average doctor doesn't even know how to check a patient for parasites because once you send your stool culture to the lab, most of the parasites have died. Plus the lab doesn't look for 500 parasites to the patient who just traveled in Indonesia or India or China or somewhere else, but parasites are in the water supply. So don't think you can't have parasites. It's very possible and very high probability you have one or more of these bugs. One of the biggest ones is fungi, funguses. Funguses, you've heard of candida. Candida thrives and survives in all of us. The reason is because we are taking antibiotics all the time. And if you're not orally taking the antibiotics, you're taking them in the food supply. So then you have electromagnetic fields, which makes all these bugs flourish. So, but so you have to change the internal milieu of the body so these critters don't survive. You can get rid of parasites. Viruses you never get rid of because viruses, uh, there's no stealth killer of viruses. You can get rid of fungi and you can get rid of parasites. But you create an uninhabitable environment for all of these bugs to live. Now here are all the other things that cause cancer. We talk about toxins. Toxins are everywhere in a concentration far superior to anything you can possibly imagine. If you buy something at the store, if it's less than 5% or 3% of the total, it does not have to be mentioned on the ingredient label. So toxins are hidden everywhere in everything that you buy, everything you put on your system, everything you breathe, every, it's, it's everywhere. So you're, you're not a chemist, you don't teach chemistry. So you just have to assume that we're living in a toxic chemical soup and you need to take the action that I'm gonna teach you today about how to take care of yourself. We talked about irradiated food, additives, you know, like look at peanut M&Ms. They're loaded with dye. I had a patient who came in and energetically I was checking her and she came up with red dye. She goes, oh yeah, I just had peanut M&Ms. So mercury, toxicity, mercury is in the air, it's in your teeth, it's in all the fish. Not some of the fish, all the fish, the only fish that are probably ingestible are sardines or shrimp or um, scallops, the smaller, the less concentration. Unfortunately, 
the other terrible pollutant in the fish today is microplastics. So microplastics are in all of us. It's the number one pollutant in man. You'll see over there the xenoestrogens. It's the number one pollutant in there. Why is this so important? Because we don't have a really good efficient removal system in our body to remove these phthalates and plastics. And so, so it's very, we know in the literature, it causes cancer, it causes heart disease and diabetes. And we know all these diseases are escalating at very alarming rates. Dental factors, root canals are a chronic infection. Remember I told you, chronic infection. 93% of breast cancers are related to a root canal tooth. Too much sunlight, electromagnetic field, you've already heard about that. Do not take that as anything lightly. It is very, very serious. You have to understand that you are a receiver and transmitter of electrical energy and fields. So when you understand that, then you will understand how all of these energies will affect your body. You have to take the proper precautions, which I think several people have already talked about this week, and I'm not going to go into that. So then there's geopathic stress, sick building syndrome, ionizing radiation, all the different. If you get it, for example, if you get a CT scan or a PET scan, and today, if you get an MRI, you're intoxicated with lots of radiation, an MRI now has gadolinium, which can have very, very serious consequences, even death. So all of my patients are prepared before a scan, before anything. I don't let a patient have a scan unless I prepare them and purify them after the scan. Uh, nuclear radiation, Fukushima is still emitting radiation. Insecticides, pesticides, you need to buy organic. Polluted water, the average water supply has over 100 medicines, not to mention the chemicals in the water supply. Chlorine, fluorine, tobacco, if you take immunosuppressive drugs, you're, you're definitely higher risk for cancer. So here's all that you, know, you think about the different sources. Fortunately, there are so many companies available today who make non-toxic products for everything, whether it's to clean your house, clean your clothes, clean your body, anything. There's a non-toxic non natural alternative. You can do DIY, do it yourself, make your own products. So, but be aware, it's all about being aware and slowly take small steps to change the way you are living. It's not that difficult. So we, we absorb things through our skin, which is the largest organ of the body. We absorb it all. You, you breathe, you drink, or you eat, or it's absorbed through your skin. So this is a real, real issue. Again, you're not going to be a perfect person about achieving everything, but you can get ahead of the game by being aware and changing the way you live and changing the things that you have in your own household. So inflammation, one of the most important markers on your blood test is something called CRP, C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is a marker that any doctor, it is not an esoteric test, it is a marker that every single person should have done on their blood. CRP stands for C-reactive protein. It should be less than one. If it's not we know it's the red light on the dashboard of your car telling you fire, inflammation, something is wrong. When you're driving and that comes on your car, you don't just ignore it. You look at it and you get to a place immediately so that you can get your car checked out so that you know what the problem is. So it's the same thing. Every disease is related to chronic inflammation. The blood test does not tell me where it is, the origin of it, but it tells me it's a warning sign. 10 or 15 years ago, Newsweek and Time had a cover on their, their news magazine covers about inflammation. Ask your doctor to check it. it. Again, it should be less than one. What brings down inflammation are omegas, the oils, the essential fatty acids. They're called essential because you must 
ingest them, either in your eating or in your taking pills, uh, supplements. So every disease is related to chronic inflammation. So when you cut your hand or your feet or something, so a lot of blood comes from, then you get swelling, and then you get the, 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 the rebor, the uh, redness, etc. And that is what creates healing. But chronic inflammation will cause a disease. Unfortunately, I always use the example of the cell phone. The cell phone was a big box a long time ago, and now it does a jillion functions. Everybody's sitting around utilizing it as an educational communication source. But unfortunately, in the healthcare system, it's become more loaded with more pills. And so by the time you're 60 or 70, you're on 10 or 12 medications, which all, all cause very serious nutrient depletion and mitochondrial dysfunction, not to mention it's interfering with something that's supposed to be taking place in your body. You do not need lots of medications. If you're in an emergency, you may need medication, but you shouldn't, with the, all my patients, and I've been doing this 31 years, over 40,000 patients, I do not have one drug rep that comes to my office, not one. And so, so we obviously have the corner of the market on not using pills, or we're doing something right. And we're doing something right. And unfortunately, doctors are lazy now because they went to medical school, they did training, and they don't want to learn the new modern medicine, which is the new cell phone. And so we've got to, you've got to become educated, empowered to take charge of your health because the government is not going to take care of you. So what is disease? Disease is a cascade of symptoms that's interfering with something properly supposed to be taking care of your body. If you get cancer, cancer is an uncontrolled growth, crazy, I mean, out of control situation that has lost its entire integrity. So disease and dis-ease are not something you want to be taking place in your body. You heard about the mitochondria from the speaker last night, Jeffrey. You have thousands of these guys. If you want to have energy, you got to take care of these guys. These guys, there's 200 to 500 per cell. You must take care of the mitochondria because that is what makes energy, ATP, which is the currency of life. So you, which I'm going to talk about how to take care of those. So, but if you keep bombarding your body with chemicals and toxins, these guys get destroyed. So you'll see that most all disease are related to mitochondrial dysfunction. We know that your genetics is not destiny. It's what you eat and how you live is what matters. Elizabeth Plourdes and somebody else, I think, talked about this. This is real. This is serious. Like I talked to you before, it's probably the single greatest toxin that we have in the world today. So you must take proper protection of your living situation, how you, everything in your life. And um, it's, it's not, unfortunately, with 5G coming up, it's not getting any better. But please arm yourself with information. There's some of the most brilliant scientists on YouTube talking about this. One of the biggest guys is Dr. Ole Johansson, who won a Nobel Prize. He knows something. Of course, the, sec the number one lobby in Washington is electro-telecommunications. So, of course, a lot of the information will be suppressed about the seriousness of electromagnetic fields. Remember, every one of you is an electrical energetic being. Do not underestimate that. So here's all the different electromagnetic, I mean, all the different frequencies of all different things, from everything from cell towers to, like, cordless phone is probably one of the worst things you can have in your home. Go back to a corded phone. Don't use a, a, an elect, a, uh, uh, a, a, a cordless phone. Thank you very much. 
Anyway, so you'll look and we're and like just getting a scan. If you go get a CT scan, it's 500 times the radiation of a chest X-ray. And PET scan is 600 times the radiation of a chest X-ray. That means you've got to take care of yourself before, during, and after any kind of scanning. So this is real. These are all very, very serious, but they're invisible, and that's why you don't think it's a big deal. So even the clothes you wear, you need to be careful about the cleaners you have, how you wash your clothes, what you, all the different things that you put in, even the beds that you, the, the linens that you use, everything. Everything that touches your body. Remember, your skin is your largest organ. You absorb more through your skin than through your mouth. So if you put creams on your body, you're actually absorbing more through your skin than through your mouth. So the average woman puts on over 168 chemicals on her body in her lotions and potions. Guys probably do too, some probably a little more than others, depending on what their personal uh, care plan is. Uh, but it's, it's, it is real. Here, I'm not going to be getting into a chemistry lesson, but these chemicals, when you see, there's a great website called EWG, Environmental Working Group, that mentions all the chemicals, what they cause. It's a good idea to take inventory of what you're using in your body and what it causes, but all these cause dysfunction in the system, you know, aware yourself, and they all go through your liver. Everything has to go through your liver. Your liver is your master internal organ that is constantly taking care of yourself. It's over 1,500 different functions in your liver, and unfortunately, the there are so many people, over 40% of the population has fatty liver. Fatty liver is when instead of you have this coarse, nice, beautiful organ, you have an organ that's turned into fat, so then it doesn't work for you. And then you wonder why you can't lose weight. You can't lose weight with a fatty liver. So what do we do with all this? Well, the first thing to do is, is think about how you're living your life. And I always tell people, because this is overwhelming in the beginning, you have to be aware of the foods. Today, fortunately, in California, we have an abundant source of organic fruits and vegetables. So know the ones, but I just prefer that people buy organic and always buy things in season. The things in season are the things that are the most economical. So, so the, these are all the different things that you can, uh, like if you wanted to buy, like avocados, personally, I don't buy organic avocados. I buy this, the regular avocados because it has a nice uh, peel on the outside of it. So, so things, but strawberries, for example, are very porous, like blueberries. So you have to buy those organics because otherwise they're loaded and saturated with chemicals. So no, if you have a farmer's market, which almost everyone in California does, go to your farmer's market, know the source of where. Do they care about what they're delivering to you? So, because you really need to, you're not going to be perfect. Again, you're not going to be perfect. You're going to be mindful, aware, and choose better. Now, fortunately, restaurants are offering things that are organic because they know people are demanding a different product. So, so try to be uh, aware and, and, and try to make small changes and incorporate it. So eating, there's a lot in the evening. There's a hundred different diets from paleo to carnivore to keto to everything. So usually what I do is I try the eating programs and I try them and I tell people there is no one size fits all, not at all. Even I run a big cancer center for healing. And, and a lot of our patients, because a lot of the studies show that a ketogenic is one of the best eating programs because a doctor, Brian Seafried, wrote a book called The Metabolic Treatment of Cancer. And basically, it's a phenomenal book. And basically, you starve the cancer cell by eating a fat diet with fat and its protein and low carbs because we are a society that's consuming enormous amounts of sugar, and sugar causes heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes, all things you don't want to eat or you don't want to have. So I always tell people fats, protein, veggies, and um, 
get eliminating the sugar and carbs from your eating. So I already mentioned about the, the average person now, it's about 66 pounds of sugar. So we're eating too much sugar. Pay attention. There's now charts for everything so that we can be, we know, we know, but a long time ago, people had to go look it up in little calorie books and, and, and books that gave how much sugar, fat, and carbs was it named thing. But the most important thing is our children are our future. Our children are going to be taking care of us. Our children are going to be taking care of the world. But we know that where we are today with our children, over 50% of our children are sick. I ask all of my school teacher patients who are 50 plus, and I say, what is the difference in your job compared to 25 years ago? Drastically different. The children are not well behaved. They have lots of chronic medical problems, and, but they shouldn't. I used to tell patients, you have a warranty until you're 40. And then from 40 to 60, you're on a semi-warranty plan. And 60 on, it's, it's, there's no warranty. It's pure repair, upkeep, and maintenance. But our children, diseases are dramatically increasing. And one of the biggest things that I know as a parent that you can influence is what you have in the household. And because my husband and I had seven kids, I know, I didn't, they didn't go to the grocery store because they can't drive until they're 16. So who is buying this food? The parents are buying the food. So the parents should be educated, and there is an enormous amount of education. There's an enormous amount of information, but they've got to take charge. So because we know, I just was reading in a publication yesterday that the increase in 20 and 30 year olds with colon cancer, they've reduced the age now to have a colonoscopy to 45, which is still very low. But it's because it's all happening in 20 and 30 year olds because they said obesity was the most common factor. So this is what's going on with their children. This is unheard of. When I went to school, no one had any of these problems. Very, very few people were ill. Very few people were obese. Nobody had cancer. Very, very few. A tonsillectomy. You need your tonsils. They're an immune organ. And so it, this, is, this is something that can be all preventable. Stress. The single greatest thing that's probably affecting all of us is stress. And everyone has had a dysfunctional household. Everyone, okay? So we have to unravel those. They say now that the emotional DNA goes back, at what we know now, nine generations. And so we have to learn how to manage our stress. Now, that's not something we grew up with. It's not something. It's not a concept of something we grew up with. But now we need to do some self-reflection and analyze our stress and where it's coming from. And I will tell you from seeing patients, I'm in the trenches every day. I just don't go around speaking and writing books. I see patients five days a week. So I learn a lot because I'm in the trenches seeing patients. And I ask my patients all the time, why do you think that they're, they're sick? Hands down, hands down. They won't tell you diet first or it's stress. So we all have to learn how to find what's the sources of our stress and, and, and unravel it and make peace and harmony with the stress that we had or the, the present stresses we have, whether it's a boss or whether it's you know, a, a family member. We have to make peace and harmony because there is no other way. There literally is no other way. I tell people love is the medicine for everything. So you have to take that on, that same kind of philosophy, because otherwise you will ingest that poison of stress and make yourself ill. So there's little things. There's a, a gentleman, uh, you can watch some of his YouTubes. He just came out with a book called Neuro Wisdom, Michael Waldman. And just taking deep, deep breaths for a minute or yawning will 
totally reset your nervous system. So you don't need an hour, you need minutes in the day to reframe that stress. How I personally do it is I do an attitude of gratitude all day long. I take everything that's maybe negative that's going on my life and turn it into a resolution of thank you God that the invincible solution will be coming right here to take care of XYZ problem. And I just, you have to turn it all around. I did not learn that actually in the last five years. So I live in an attitude of gratitude all the time, okay? Yes. So, so but you have, to, you have to be mindful of the stress, though. You have to understand that stress is part of life. It's part of everyone's life. And that you've got to learn, turn, learn to turn around stress and let it work for you. I always tell people, your disadvantages become your advantages. So nature, we have the, our own internal natural pharmacy, and we live in nature, which provides all the answers, right? With good air, sitting under a tree, walking on the beach, all these wonderful things can help us heal ourselves. So everyone knows about negative ions. So negative ions, because we have chemicals in our body that have positive charge, and we go to the beach and we get negative ions. It's antimicrobial, helps your serotonin, and it helps your mood. So these are great things. If you go to the park, it also provides the same kind of positive medicine. But we have to take the time to do it. So if you don't live on the beach, but you can go to a park or a wooded area, um, I took my kids yesterday, we went to Marin and took a major hike. So uh, th these are things you, you must incorporate because this is probably one of the single greatest things to help balance electromagnetic fields. Yes, you can get electro dots. Yes, you can turn off the electricity to your bedroom. Yet, but you still, you need to balance your energy with nature. Nature has the answer. We have to incorporate movement. We become this sedentary society that doesn't move. But motion is lotion for our joints and for our body. It increases endorphins, helps your immune systems, helps you purify, helps you sleep better, so many things. And it, you don't have to go and run a marathon because you don't have time to go run a marathon. You don't have to be a triathlete. Just move every chance you can. Take stairs, walk further, get up from the computer every hour in the hour and go walk five minutes. You'll be very productive. But unfortunately, we become this motionless society that is destructive to how our body works every day. This is another problem. Because Edison invented electricity, people don't sleep. They stay up and watch things and they're on their computer and they're on this device and that they don't get enough sleep. We don't even know all the magic and medicine of sleep. We know the answer is you've got to get about eight hours sleep. Sometimes it's eight and a half. Actually, in the books, uh, uh, oh, it's sleep, oh, very famous book. But they were saying we need nine and a half hours sleep because at the turn of the century, that's what people, uh, lights out. Uh, that's turn of the century people, what do they do? They slept because there was no lights and people had to go walk miles and miles and miles to go get their food, to take care of everything because there wasn't cars, there wasn't fax machines, there weren't computers. So sleep deprivation is terribly destructive to your immune system and contributes to all diseases. And one of the biggest diseases is weight gain. And people, because people come in all the time and uh, they can't lose weight, and a lot of it's because they're not sleeping. But you are just not gonna, not gonna be a nice person if you don't sleep, because it terribly affects your mood. You don't make good decisions, etc. And if you take sleeping pills, you have a 30% increased risk of dying, so don't take sleeping pills. Purification, okay, I don't like to use the word detoxification because it sounds so horrible. Purifying means, oh gosh, this is almost angelic. And so, so there's all kinds of things. Like I said before, if you don't have money and you don't want to spend money and you don't want to buy anything, the best thing for you to do is fast. 
you can fast one day a week and basically institute purification in your body. So the other, other thing is you want to try to eat the food that doesn't have lots of chemicals. You want to try to, um, uh, here's all the different ways of cl in cleansing your body through your, through your intestines, your blood, your skin, kidneys, lymphatics, lung, and liver. Now, I have all kinds of tools in my clinic to accelerate this process because a lot of my patients are on the fast track to get well, and so they don't have time for uh, a, a lot of things because they, they are on literally doing something eight hours a day to take care of themselves. Now, I do tell patients frequently to fast because I tell people that that it really, really, really accelerates purification, repair, and increase of stem cells to take care of your body. Now, these are all the different things. Water, please buy a good water, water purifier. The, the, the water is absolutely toxic. I don't know any place where there's good water. And so you've got to, because look, the rain is toxic, everything's toxic. So you have to invest in a good water purification system. Parasite cleanse, liver flush, it's on my website. Coffee enemas have been around for 100 years. Green juices, carrot juice, clay, I very love clay baths. Sauna, I've had a sauna in my clinic and at home for 17 years. So these are all the things that you can do to purify your life. You, you don't have to do all of these. Now some of my patients, unfortunately, are busy doing a lot of this because they have stage four cancer and they need to get well immediately. So drink, the rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces plus 10 ounces for exercise lot. Most people are dehydrated and I can tell because their kidney function, the average doctor does not look at the patient's kidney function. There's a specific thing on your kidney called the estimated glomerular filtration rate. That's just a fancy name for how much water is going through your, or, or fluids are going through your kidney. If that number isn't 100, you are having problems. And kidney disease is going up. There's more dialysis units than ever before. Just go look it up. So here are some of the, some of the supplements you can take. Glutathione. Now, personally, I will tell you that I check all of this on every single person. So I don't have to guess. I know whether my patient has good glutathione. I know if they, have, if they need lipoic acid. So I know what my patients need and I prescribe appropriately. So chlorella, spirina, charcoal, milk thistle for the liver. I take something for my liver every day. So I usually, now the, one of the latest greatest things is carbon 60. And so that was actually came out in the 80s. Um, and it, what it does, it looks like a soccer ball that has hexagons and pentagons and carbons make up uh, the, the corners. And what this is, is basically olive oil or sunflower oil combined with charcoal. In the emergency room, we use charcoal to get rid of a chemical or toxin that someone is toxic in. So if they accidentally pour, uh, swallowed something, we use activated charcoal to bring it out of the system. So what does this do? This helps preserve your mitochondria. So basically, it's a fat, and the fat goes into all the membranes, all of your cells. You have trillions of cells. They're all made up of a fatty acid membrane. And remember that picture of the mitochondria that I did had a beautiful mitochondria. Well, those are all fatty. And so this carbon with the charcoal, the charcoal with the olive oil or sunflower oil gets in there and basically purifies it. So it gets rid of the free radicals helps prevent, the, it's very great antiviral, antibacterial, um, and so, so the studies are coming out more and more. The other thing I use and I have used for years is zeolite. You, zeolite is used great in environmental projects. It is a volcanic, a volcanic uh, substance uh, that looks like a honeycomb, and the honeycomb captures the chemicals and toxins. It comes in drops. It's very easy to do. Yes, they have pills, but it will help basically magnetize the toxin and bring it out as water. So here's all the things you can do. And like I said, I don't want, my goal is not for you to be overwhelmed. My, my goal for you is to be mindful of what you can do and what's out there to slowly take care of yourself. You will feel 1,000 times better if you start doing and embracing these things 
and learn how to depend upon yourself as opposed to the medical system that isn't working for the patient. I will tell you, we rank 50th in the world. We spend the most and get the least. So third world countries are faring better than us. So don't think, and if you go to the hospital, you're 25% risk of getting methicillin staph resistant infection. You're at risk of getting a mistake. You're at risk for getting some major illness. So do yourself a favor and take charge of your own self. Somebody already, uh, Mary brought this up. Yes, this was like, this is what every doctor, World Health Organization says, that what's the cause of the illness? In 90% of cases, eating and lifestyle. And how many doctors teach patients how to eat and orchestrate their life? Very few, if any, unfortunately. Yes, there's a functional integrative doctors like myself, but unfortunately, and there's health coaches now, there's a whole new crop of health coaches and people that are trying to, to educate and teach patients. So um, we already talked about the household clinic uh, uh, chemicals that are in the environment, everything you do, but you can easily change. Like I have hardwood floors in my house. I have aromatherapy with essential oils. I have air purifier. I do not buy any products for cleaning. I do not, I buy a non-toxic laundry detergent. And so, and now if you look at the, the new things, there's the Institute of Biology, Bau, BAU Biology. Now it's the new way of doing a building. So the new building is now all environmentally conscious. So everyone's, uh, 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 everyone's becoming aware of this because we're seeing that there's disastrous chemicals in almost everything we're doing. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at your receipts now, the receipts are loaded with plastic. So you have to be very, very careful. So you can get plants. This has been around. This is nothing new. You can get special plants. These are the different ones that basically clean and deodorize your air. That's very easy and get ones that require the least amount. I do not have a green thumb. And so we, you want to get things that um, can uh, uh, purify your air. Also, you don't have to buy these special hand sanitizers. We're becoming too antimicrobial. Just use plain soap and water. What I use at my office to clean my hands before each patient is I use hydrogen peroxide. I just have a little dipping thing and I use hydrogen peroxide and clean my hands. So I don't, use, I don't like alcohol. This is special grain alcohol because a lot of alcohol has a lot of toxins in it. So you don't have to use any fancy spancy. Go in your, go in your pantry and see the stuff you have. A lot of the stuff you have is probably not good for you. So you need to clean out your pantry. Rice is loaded with arsenic, unfortunately. Food coloring dyes, all the canned tuna, one of the biggest, most common heavy metals that we see in our clinic are mercury from the fish. Mercury from the fish, from the amalgams, and the pollution, because the number one pollutant that when they burn coal is mercury and mercury is everywhere in the air. And so mercury is extremely toxic to the mitochondria. So, and then the canned foods, the can, another thing in canned foods besides the BPA that's lining the can is tin, T-I-N. That is what we measure too in our clinic. So tin is in a lot of those drinks, tin and aluminum are in a lot of the drinks. So you don't wanna really be drinking a lot of canned anything. So then obviously the styrofoam, one of the other chemicals that we check when we see a patient is styrene. Well, styrene is in the styrofoam. And then obviously flat plastic. Get rid of all the plastic as much as you can and replace it with glassware. Not Tupperware, glassware or ceramic ware. I did this years and years ago. All my neighbors thought I was crazy. And I did, because I knew about this over 17 years ago. And I told uh, all my neighbors, they asked me if I'd ever heard of plastic. And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I have, but I choose. Because I had little kids and I had, they 
when they go to play outside, they had glass containers, and they're like, what? how can you bring glass? And I'm like, no, because we don't have plastic. So I didn't use plastic baby bottles or anything. So microwave popcorn, the linings, whether you have the ones in a pan or you have the bag, they're loaded with chemicals. Obviously, the insecticides, pesticides, and fruits and vegetables. And then the brominated vegetable oils, OK? Those are in a lot of our food supply. Well, bromine, bromine is one of the halogens on the periodic table. Bromine replaces iodine in your body that you need to work and function and for your thyroid to work. So a lot of these new halogens basically are usurping something that's supposed to be in our body and disturbing the natural function and integrity of the organ. So here's all the different things you can use to clean. Uh, baking soda, if you looked at the original manual, 100 years on baking soda, baking soda is great for everything. From brushing your teeth to a deodorant to, to deodorizing anything in your house for cleaning everything, baking soda is great. If you have cancer, it works great also. So these are all the different things uh, that you can use for cleaning. Get rid of Teflon. We know Teflon is not good. Be, just use stainless steel. Stainless steel is the only thing that you should be using. Uh, people can use cast iron cell skillets, or there's a great line from, Par uh, from Europe. La Crescette is a good line also. So, uh, you know, this is kind of the new industry of, of now is, you know, from Monsanto to DuPont. These chemical, these companies uh, will all be paying a big price because they're going to be proving, hopefully, that, uh, that these things are, are, are deleterious to the survival of mankind. And so uh, carpeting, carpeting, I would recommend that you not have carpet. Yes, if you Google non-toxic carpets, there are non-toxic carpets by using um, wools and other materials that don't emanate. Not to mention, lots of bugs and mold can grow in carpet. So it's better to have stone or uh, bamboo. And they have so many new to non-toxic floorings that you can use. Uh, also, healthy furniture. Again, I brought up this before, being aware of all the different uh, building supplies that you use. Uh, because if you go into a tennis shoe store and you can't breathe, that's because all the chemicals are your new car uh, that also has all kinds of uh, chemicals emanating and outgassing from it. Um, again, your everything you use, invest in or get, buying organic sheets is the same price as buying regular sheets. Target even has organic sheets now. So, but that's you sleep in a third of your life, so you need to have the right materials, right bed, and the right materials. Air at your home. Indoor air pollution is worse than outdoor air pollution. So. Air your home. I have air purifier, and I do have aromatherapy in my in my house. And so, it, do yourself a favor and and allowing natural air uh, as long as it's not freezing cold. Uh, then uh, plastic again. The problem with plastic is we can't get rid of it. And so, if you you've got to help the environment by not using it, and you're plasticizing your body, which I already told you causes cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, among other things. So we have to take the role of protecting our planet and ourselves. Um, microwave oven, we already know that you deplete all the nutrients and deactivate the nutrients. Warm yourself in a little stone, in a little uh, toaster oven and or a little skillet with water. Uh, do your best. I personally t turn off the electricity to my bedroom every night. I had, I had an engineer who came and did an evaluation of my house to decide on what was, what was the most problematic areas and where I slept was the most problematic. And so I had an electrician come in and put a switch in. So I turn off the electric, electricity to my bedroom every single night. I have a battery operated clock that I use if I need to use an alarm clock. And so otherwise, I do not sleep 
with electrical stuff. Now, I will tell you, the extraneous EMFs that come through the walls, because all EMFs come through the walls and through your windows and everything, unless you buy their specific paint you can put on your walls and their specific window panes you can use. You can buy canopies that you can put on and pretty soon they're coming out with a sleeping bag that you're going to be able, an EMF proof sleeping bag. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be absolutely a necessity. Once you, the studies are all out, you know, uh, it, if anyone says they're, they're, they have problems with it, I, I tell people, even if it's 50% true, you need to take the proper precautions. Create your own little herb garden now in this day and time with just a little space. You can have your own little uh, a garden. Essential oils, I think someone might have talked. So essential oils have been around for a long time, and they have the highest vibrational frequency of any, any substance over vitamins, minerals, and everything. Essential oils have very, very high vibrational frequency and very helpful for all kinds of things. Uh, to take care of in the human body. Here's just a few examples of the different properties of essential oils. And so those are things that you can use on a regular basis. Uh, like I said, I put them in my air. I, I use different ones for different things. So this is just a sampling, and I know there was an exhibitor for essential oil. So we, we do this because our patients always, always ask about what to do, how to do it, and everything. So we, we came up with a little guide that, that, that can help them take care of them things, things that I have learned and studied over the years. One of the best things you can do is invest in either a portable sauna, infrared sauna. Infrared saunas are, have been around. Sweating has been around forever and ever and ever. Uh, so sweating purifies you, oxygenates you, increases your circulation. Plus, in the human body, we have something called heat shock proteins. We have three different heat shock proteins. Well, heat shock proteins are designed to protect yourself and get rid of illness. So sauna is all around one of the best things you can do. Now, if you don't have a sauna, then I have my patients pure, do a, a bath with Epsom salts, baking soda, and clay that I mentioned earlier. So um, anyway, so when we have a patient, we obviously look at all the different facets of the way someone's living. We just don't say, we don't just check their vital signs in a few little blood work. We, ex we go through everything. That's why a lot of times it's not just one little uh, visit because we have to assess all these things. So these are all the different modalities that we may implement when taking care of a patient. Um, there, we treat everything from cold to cancer and everything in between and obviously human optimization. So, um, and that's what the doctor of the future will do. So unfortunately, this is the most, probably most important uh, slide of today, is most people are not excited about being healthy until they're deathly ill. So it's your job to become ambassadors of educating, empowering, and inspiring people to be the best they can be, and it starts with your health. So um, I always ask the question with patients, do you want to live? Because this is really the question. Do you want to live and how do you want to live? And so if you want to be a vibrant human being that is living to its fullest, there are things that you're going to need to do and to be mindful, not perfectionist, but you're going to have to make small changes slowly by slowly, and, and, and you will see the difference. So thank you very much. Oh, I'm going to be signing books, too. The Cancer Revolution. I came out with that book uh, last year, and um, unfortunately it's growing exponentially because, as I said before, Cancer is uh, growing weekly, worse and worse and worse, and not just in adults, but in younger people also. 
So, and now, of course, they come to me when they are last resort, uh, which is not the time to come to me. But again, people are not interested in prevention. They're interested only once they get sick. So we've got to wake up uh, humanity so that they can uh, prevent illness, which is today, in this day and time, with what we know now, is really a, a pre completely preventable. With the technology, the testing, what we have today, it's, there's no reason for people to be ill, really. So, yes, sir. Well, I gave a great Facebook Live on hormones, so I would look at that Facebook Live on hormones. Now, you're a male, so males need their thyroid checked. They need their hemoglobin A1C checked, which is a reflection of your sugar over 90 days. So that's all the hormones, insulin and glucagon, uh, you know, keep that under control. Then your testosterone, since you're a male, males, DHEA sulfate, and pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is the grandmother of all hormones. Pregnenolone, P-R-E-G-N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E. -E. So those are obviously a CRP, obviously a vitamin D. Yeah, CRP is the marker for inflammation. So just make sure if you have an integrative doctor, he or she should be doing all of those. Mm -hmm. So she needs to go back and read about CRP. So, so good. Well, thank you guys. Anybody else have any questions? Great. Well, Canelium D has everything and everything that I, uh, all the different, because I have, I have Center for New Medicine and Cancer Center for Healing. So we have the Center for New Medicine for patients who just want to come in and get healthy, or they have, uh, where if you have cancer or you're interested in prevention of cancer, they would come through Cancer Center for Healing. It's all in the same place, though. Well, thank you, guys. You're welcome.